everybody, the manual machinist here. Today I'd like to bring you along for an exciting upgrade here in the shop where I'll be installing this new all DRO kit on my tree vertical milling machine. This is going to be a two part video series where the first part I'm going to go ahead and cover the installation of the DRO kit where I'll be mounting the reed heads, the scales, the guards, and routing all the cables. Last but not least, powering up the monitor here. The second part video is going to be solely on this monitor and kind of explaining some of its benefits and features where I'll be covering the bolt circle function, the arc contouring function, and a pocket milling function. So be sure to stay tuned for the part two video. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into installing this kit. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. I'm here to help. All right, now that we have the whole DRO kit laid out here, the first step we're gonna do is go ahead and mount the Y scale and reed head. To do that, we're gonna use one of the two scale mounting bracket kits that are furnished with this. And if you look over here on the milling machine, kind of give you an idea of what's gonna go on. I've got this T-slot track down here. I'm gonna use this to mount the scale. And then we're gonna have to come up with some sort of bracket coming off the saddle here that will then mount the reed head to. To mount the Y scale, we're gonna use one of the two bracket kits that come with this. This one's for the X and this one's for the Y. They're actually the same kit. Just a brief overview, you've got these long pillars here. You've got the support links and then the anchor pins. All right, I've got the two support pins, washers and some T-nuts here that we're gonna then install on this track and I'm just going to loosely tighten them right now. Next we'll install the two support links. Last I've got the skill with the two anchor pins on each end. So now you got an idea of what the scale is going to look like mounted on this T-slot track. There is adjustability up and down, in and out, and then of course anywhere we can slide it on this T-slot track. All right, so what we're going to do next is go ahead and mount the reed head on the scale there. And that way we can get sort of an idea of what sort of mounting bracket we're going to need to attach it to the saddle here. Now I've got the reed head there mounted loosely on the scale. Just kind of getting an idea of what I'm going to need for a bracket in order to attach it to the saddle. If you was installing this DRO kit on a bridge port, the kit actually comes with these here two brackets. And they would essentially mount right there. And then the reed head would mount to this secondary bracket. And they're slotted to give you adjustment. But since I'm installing this on a tree mill, I won't be able to use those brackets. Instead, I'm thinking about using this piece of aluminum here and just making a custom bracket to essentially bolt to the bottom of the saddle and then drill and tap some holes in here to mount the reed head to. That's what I came up with as far as the custom bracket to mount this reed head to the saddle. Uh, as you can see, I've got two socket head cap screws, which I'm going to drill and tap into the bottom of the saddle here to mount it. And then you can see these two mounting holes here on the reed head. One other thing I did is I went ahead and drilled and tapped four set screw holes, which will allow me to tram the reed head in once we get everything mounted. So the next step is to mock this up here and get these holes located on the bottom and I'll center punch them and we'll drill and tap for a quarter 20. All right, I got the custom bracket bolted to the reed head right now. And I've got this little square here that I'm gonna help get everything lined up. Once I feel like it's in a good position, I'm gonna go ahead and take a hammer and center punch these two mounting holes here. Then we'll take the bracket back away and then go ahead and drill and tap for the quarter 20 set screws. The reed head and scale removed. The holes have been center punched for the custom bracket. 
Got my number eight drill bit. I went ahead and put a piece of tape on it to make sure I don't go too deep. So we will go ahead and drill and tap the holes for the bracket. All right, now we have the bracket securely mounted to the saddle and the reed head is mounted to the bracket. The next step in this process is to tram this reed head in to make sure it's running parallel with the axis. And to do so, I'm gonna get an indicator out and we will indicate on the bottom of the reed head and also along the side to make sure it is running parallel. And in order to do so, we have these four set screws here that more or less will allow us to have some flexibility to make sure everything is running nice and now true. Now that we have the reed head mounted to the machine, we need to go ahead and make sure it is properly aligned. This is a snippet out of the installation manual showing you that the reader head should be mounted with both planes parallel to the axis of travel within two thousandths from end to end. So you're going to want to take an indicator and run it along the top of the reed head and along the side and make sure it's within two thousandths from end to end. So you can see here I've got my indicator set up along the bottom and along the back side there. Both are zeroed out right now, so we're gonna traverse the table and see how bad it is out of alignment. All right, now we're down on the other end. Looks like on the bottom side, we're out about 11 thousandths, and then on the back side, it looks like we were out about 15,000. So we're going to go ahead and loosen these set screws and tighten these to get the reed head trammed in parallel to the axis. After going back and forth a few times, I think I've got it to where it's aligned. We'll go ahead, see we're zeroed out on both indicators there. Go ahead and traverse the table down to the other side. We are lining back up on zero on each one. I would say it's, it's within a half a thousandths from end to end, which is well in spec of the two thousandths. So pretty happy with that. At this point, we're gonna go ahead, remove the indicators and get the scale back in here and we'll go ahead and snug it down. Now that we have the reed head mounted securely and aligned with the axis, before I install the scale back, I'm going to go ahead and install this aluminum guard here. Uh, a couple options are going about this. These studs are actually drilled and tapped and the book recommends that you can use those to mount this scale guard. But since I've got the custom bracket here, I'm going to have to essentially mount it like this. So I had some holes already pre-drilled into this knee here that I'm gonna use to mount this guard with. Okay, I've got the guard mounted now. So we're gonna go ahead and get the scale back in there and I will show you how to properly align it. Okay, the scale's back in there and it's brackets. The way that you're supposed to align the scale with the reed head is you go ahead and loosen all three bolts here on the stanchion blocks and you will traverse the reed head to its maximum position and then just snug these up and then go ahead and traverse it all the way down to the other side, snug those up and just kind of keep going back and forth until everything is properly aligned and fully tightened. You just wanna make sure that there's no binding whatsoever whenever you're traversing the table. Okay, I've got it all the way down to this maximum position. I'm gonna start by tightening this bottom bolt, work to this next one, and then the last one will be actually locking the scale into place. Kind of want to wiggle the brackets around while tightening them just to make sure they're nest in their home position here. Okay, now I've got those three snugged up. I'm going to go ahead and traverse the table down to the other side and tighten these down here. Now that I've got the reed head all the way down to the other position, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these three blocks as well, just wiggling them as I tighten them just to make sure they're in the home position here. All 
All right, that should be secure now down on that end. I'm gonna go ahead and traverse the table back and forth a few times just to make sure I don't feel any binding. And then the last step will be is cable management, which I'm not gonna worry about that right this minute. I'm gonna go ahead and get the X axis installed and then we'll route the cables afterwards. But that pretty much sums it up here for the Y axis. Okay, so now that we have the Y axis scale wrapped up down there, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the X axis. I'll be mounting it here on the back of the table. I went ahead and measured the scale and it's about 40 inches long. The table itself is 48 from end to end. See, I got a little red mark here. I've got one down on the other side as well too. That's essentially centered up where the scale is gonna be mounted at. Let me go ahead and get the scale and reed head back here and we'll kind of mock it up to see what's the best approach as far as mounting it. Here we've got the scale and reed head. I went ahead and partially assembled it, putting the mounting brackets for the scale on each end. And then if we zoom in here on the actual reed head, this here is actually one of the supplied brackets it came with, which I think we'll be able to use in our application. More or less going to mount it like this. And then we'll need to drill and tap two holes on each end of the table to mount the scale. Okay, I've got the uh, scale and reed head kind of mocked up there. Got a magnet holding it down here on this end, and then I got a C-clamp over there. I think the first step we're going to do is go ahead and get this reed head mounted again. If you look down here, I've got these two slotted holes. There's actually already a hole in the table that pretty much lines with the first one. So I think I just need to drill this second hole here and then tap both of them for a quarter 20 set screw. So let's get that done and then we'll worry about getting the scale mounted. Got the uh, two holes drilled and tapped and we got the reed head there. We're gonna go ahead and get it mounted and we'll just lightly tighten the bolts on it. And then we're gonna use the indicator again and tram it in to make sure it's running with the axis. Okay, now we've got the reed head mounted and similar to what we did on the Y axis, we've got the indicators on the face here we're gonna run across and then along on the top. We need to make sure it's within two thousandths of an inch from end to end. So we're gonna go ahead and traverse the table down. So like I said, we're pretty far off right now. Uh, like I said, the mounting bolts are just loosely snug right now, so I'm gonna adjust it here to see if we can get it within spec. Back and forth a few times, but I believe I've got the reed head adjusted now or trammed into the axis of the machine. We'll do one final sweep here. Got both indicators zeroed out. We'll traverse down to the other side. And there we go. Like I said, we're within a half thousandths on each, each side. Back on the 20 there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we'll remove the indicators and we'll go ahead and slide the scale back in there and we'll get both positions marked on each end to drill and tap for these, these pins. Now we got the scale back mounted into the reed head there. I went ahead and traversed the table all the way down to one side. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and drill and tap for these anchor pins. So while the scale is inside the reed head loosely there, I'm gonna take the center punch here, little adapter. We'll center punch that hole and then drill and tap for this metric eight by 1.25 thread. We've got the hole drilled and tapped for our support pin here. Go ahead and screw it in. Tighten it up. And we'll grab our blocks here. And we'll line our scale up that line there. Go ahead and traverse the table all the way down to the other side. We're gonna work on getting this here support pin mounted. Pretty much same process, going to Center punch this right here, and we'll drill and tap for a M8 by 1.25 thread. We 
we've got the hole drilled and tapped, ready to install the support pin. Tighten it down. We'll grab our block here. Similar to how we did on the y-axis to tighten these blocks here. I've got all these bolts loose right now. You traverse the table to the max position and then you will tighten it up. Start with the bolt on the support pin first and then work your way to the scale. And then we'll do the same thing down on the other side. After that, we'll work on getting this here guard installed. Now that we've got the scale mounted and the reed head mounted, we're going to go ahead and work on installing this protective guard. The support pillars are drilled and tapped on each end. I've got a little transfer screw right here. Put in the end of it there. And then we'll put this in place and tap it on the back to transfer the center hole. As you can see, we've got the X scale guard mounted now. With that being said, both the Y axis and X axis are complete at this point. We still have yet to route the cables, but before I do that, I wanna go ahead and concentrate on getting the monitor installed. And once we get the monitor installed, we will then route the cables along the machines and use the zip ties and cable clamps used to snug everything up. Just a quick overview of what it's gonna to take to install a monitor here. Obviously we have the monitor, the power adapter, the swivel arm, this is the grounding kit, and then the hardware to mount the arm, and then the monitor to the arm. So first I'm going to go ahead and find a position to mount this here on the machine. I've got this little piece of square tubing here that's bolted to the top of the machine. I'm going to go ahead and cut out a square plate to weld to the end of it, and then I will then mount the swivel arm to it. I think that's going to be the best position to have the monitor mounted. Okay, as you can see, I've got the monitor now installed. All I had was this little metal piece here bolted to the top of the machine. And I went ahead and bolted this swinging arm to that. The grounding strap, I went ahead and connected to the mounting bolts as well. They're on that arm. So at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and route the cables for the X and Y axis up to this monitor and then also plug in the power supply. Well, I think that about wraps up this project. As you can see, I've got the monitor mounted now. I went ahead and plugged everything in, routed all the cables, zip tied everything together. As you can see, I've got my readout there for both X and Y. Both axes seem to be working well, not walking at all. Just give you a look here of how I've routed the cables. See down here, I did one cable clamp there on the saddle. And then I took both of them and attached them here to the back of the knee. And then this has the excess there. One thing I did do is I went ahead and lowered the knee all the way down and then pushed the table all the way forward. That way I make sure I have enough slack in the cables because this essentially be the max maximum position on each side. So, but like I said, routed them up behind the control box here. Then like I said, got them tied into the back of the monitor. So at this point, I think we're pretty much finished installing this DRO kit. I will be doing a part two video going through this monitor itself and kind of going through some of the features like the bolt hole circle and other things like that so be sure to subscribe and check out the next video thank you for watching